I am DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we'll be looking at Ubuntu 2304 desktop lunar lobster. So let's uh, let's talk about some of the features and some of the things that it has. First of all, I think we need to talk about lifespan because 2304 is not a long-term release. Uh, it is it meant to show off new capabilities, and so it has a much shorter lifespan. As, you, as most of you pros know, that it won't be until 24, 2024, where we have the next long-term release. Those go every other year. So this particular uh, release of 2304 will be supported until Jan the end of January of 2024. Uh, it also comes with a new installer. This one is based on Flutter, which is a UI language that allows uh, applications that are programmed using Flutter to run on cell phones, tablets, and desktops. I don't know. It could be that maybe there's some plans that Fedora has uh, for the, but that's only for the desktop environments. For the server environments, they use Subiquity. Uh, and uh, and that is canonical CLI installer for the server. And architecture supported. There's AMD 64, uh, x86 64, same thing. They also support ARM 64. There's a number of platforms that run it. You can, of course, run this on Raspberry Pis. And they have environments for RISC V as well as uh, the IBM S390. So the minimum requirements, I'm pulling these from 2210. We'll validate those against how much it looks like it's actually taking. But the 2210 said that you needed at least a dual core, 64-bit architecture, 4 gig of RAM, 25 gig of disk space, 1024 by 768 resolution or better. Note that the desktop image for AMD 64 and ARM 64 there's possibly others, but there's, those are not going to fit on a standard 703 megabyte CD. You may have to use DVDs, USB sticks, or a virtual machine to install it. As far as what uh, flavors of, of Ubuntu come with uh, the system that you can choose, uh, you have, of course, the Ubuntu desktop, which is known. Uh, edu, uh, edubuntu, which is a children's oriented free education distro. There's uh, Kubuntu, which is KDE, Lubuntu, which is LXQT. And there's Ubuntu Budgie, and then there's Ubuntu uh, Cinnamon, which is new. There's Ubuntu Kylan, uh, Ubuntu Mate, uh, Ubuntu Studio, which is for AV and graphics, Ubuntu Unity, and Zubuntu XFCE. So you have lots of choices uh, in the spin. GNOME has been updated to include new features and fixes from the latest GNOME release, which is GNOME 44. The Ubuntu font has been updated, so you, you'll probably notice it looks a little bit cleaner than some of the previous releases. Although, you know, Ubuntu has always had a very nice interface for their desktops. Pipewire is now the default sound server. However, uh, they do not recommend that you that you use this for professional audio. Base application versions, Firefox uh, 111 after the update. LibreOffice is 7.5.2. That's also available on the RISC-V release. Uh, Ramina is 1.4.29. Rhythmbox 3.4.6. Shotwell 30. It's 0 0.30.18. Thunderbird is 102.10. Transmission is version 3. Uh, there's also an updated subsystem version. Uh, Blue Z has been upgraded to 566. Uh, one of the things that you'll find with Bluetooth uh, now, if you have Bluetooth devices attached to your, your machine, it will show you the last ones used. Uh, Network Manager 1.42, Pipewire is 0 0.3.65, uh, Puppier is 22.12, and XDG Desktop Portal is 1.16. The desktop errata some issues that uh, are still present. The screen reader is able to read many parts of the GTK, uh, GTK4 apps. Uh, but if you want to use screen reader, 
they recommend that you use the Ubuntu Desktop 2204 if you need the screen reader support. Uh, Broadcom uh, STA wireless device uh, driver, which is required for some Broadcom, uh, Broadcom devices, is not installed. Uh, but it is available via the software properties to get it. So if you have Broadcom drivers, devices that require the Broadcom drivers, you could encounter issues where those devices aren't working properly. If XDDG Desktop Portal GNOME is installed on non-GNOME systems, the file chooser is confining apps, and that takes a long time for them to load. App icons that uh, are having some issues are the high contrast ones. Uh, and these aren't the correct ones <laughs> that should be enabled. This also uses the Linux kernel 6.2, and so it has all of the same enhancements that uh, Fedora uh, 38 has. So if you saw the video on 38, then I'll, I'll cover this for those of you that didn't watch that. There is, uh, in the 6.2 kernel, there's faster mitigations for RET bleed CPU vulnerability, and find IBT, that's another mitigation feature. ButterFS has had additional performance improvements for both RAID 5 and RAID 6, but there's still no word in the kernel notes whether or not RAID 5 and 6 is safe to use in production. There's uh, better control of block devices and writebacks. Also, add support for proactive TCP protection load balancing that probably will have no benefit for you as a home user. That's more for data center class switches. There's also, again, uh, improved Rust support that, um, that applies to both string and formatting, errors, printing, memory allocation, macros, and uh, there's a lot more improvements there. Before we look at the benchmarks, uh, I and maybe, um, yeah, well, before we look at the benchmarks, let me just say that the, the benchmarks I, I, I had uh, Ubuntu included in uh, the same benchmarks as Fedora. So they use a uh, ext4 file system. They do quite they do okay in the benchmarks. Uh, Ubuntu never really uh, in, in the history of all the desktops I've looked at, performance has not been one of their uh, shining attributes. The, they're more about making things look good and easy. Uh, but if you want a fast operating system, this is probably not the place for you. I have have noticed that over time, the system is growing in size and continues to do so. But uh, most of the operating systems that I, I have ever known and been around for any length of time, they all go that same direction. The, the biggest issue is here. So if I, I know this one has a flat pack. So if I go here and look under this, yeah, it, 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 I don't know if there's something I need to install to be able to get this to work. But what I did was I, I installed it the way, the way the flat hub said to do it. And uh, and and so I can I can go here and pick one of these. Let's see, let's try. Yeah, let's try one IP. What the heck? And then it will drop a file, and then I can click that, and I can do. Now see, it's taken install. But there's a there's a three step process now. It's a real pain in the butt to use uh, flat packs on uh, Ubuntu, which I think is the whole reason that uh, the, that is by design, I am sure. With that, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video today. Stick around. We're going to look at the benchmarks. But uh, if you like this video, please share it. Please share it with your friends. And uh, hope to see you all in the next one. And bye for now.